Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 72 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have been having a lot of fun the last couple of episodes, haven't I? Uh, we've been checking out Thermal Expansion, which is cool. Uh, we've got a bunch of high tier machines with all kinds of good stuff going on. We set up some automated stuff with Fluxed Phytogrow, and I can turn off my F3H right now. Uh, I can show you, ooh, it's dark down here. I should probably light it up a little bit. Uh, automated nether wart, both types of mushrooms, and sugarcane to the point where as soon as I use a certain amount of it, it will automatically start producing more courtesy of these machines. How cool is that? I love it. Um, we also did a similar build a few episodes back over here to keep in stock a certain amount of uh, nether quartz and glowstone and stuff like that. So... That's pretty cool. Now here's what I want to do today. I'd like to work on Terra Steel automation. We took a little break from Batania uh, to focus on some thermal expansion stuff, but I think we've got a lot of the thermal expansion stuff down pat at this point. Uh, we've checked out a lot of the machines that are available from thermal expansion. So I'm going to switch back to Batania because I have a really cool idea on how to automate Terra Steel. Dun dun dun! Terrasteel automation is another one of those elusive little, like, tricky little things that is a little bit tricky to do. Um, it's not super duper easy, um, but it's not also impossible. And uh, I think I've come up with a good way to do it that's both fun and interesting and not overly complex and, you know, pretty cool. Um, and we're going to use a mod that I've been using quite a bit lately because it's super powerful and really easy to use, and that is XNet. So we're gonna use XNet to automate TerraSteel. And I'm gonna show you guys some more advanced logic features that XNet offers, and that should be neat. So let's get some things from XNet. We're gonna need our networking cable. We're gonna need uh, at least a few connectors. We're gonna need a controller. Cool, nice, nice. Everybody's good. Uh, we're going to need an open crate. Okay, uh, and to get an open crate, we're going to need two sets of you, which should get me one of these, and that should be cool. We're going to need a phantom face, because, you know, I'm liking to keep my area over there nice and clean and tidy. So, phantom face, because, obviously, clean and tidy is good. Um, and I've already got my phantom connector, because I played with phantom faces last episode, so I still have that on me. Uh, I think that should be good. Maybe. Let's get a couple mana dudes. So let's get like one, two, let's get five of each. Does that sound cool? Nice. All right, so let's talk about what needs to be done for TerraSteel, right? So in order for TerraSteel to work, we need to drop exactly one mana pearl, mana diamond, mana steel ingot on top of the terrestrial agglomeration plate. If you drop too many, for example, two mana steel, it ain't gonna work. It has to be one exactly of each type, okay? So that's an important feature. What I'm gonna do is remove the terrestrial agglomeration plate for the time being, and that'll also take off the spark because I wanna test this uh, mechanic without it actually crafting like 20 ingots of terra steel throughout my crafting and testing. Um, so we're gonna head downstairs and we're gonna do the old drill upgrade. Dun, 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 dun. Much nicer. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good, yeah? Okay, cool. Put away some junk we don't need anymore, and we're good to go. So, let's get the basics set up, right? Underneath the terrestrial agglomeration plate area, I'm gonna have my phantom connector, and above it, uh, let's keep it in line with all these dudes, right? We'll have our open crate. So at the end of the day, we're trying to make things look both nice and functional, right? I'm trying to keep it nice in my Batania area, because Batania's a nice looking mod. I want it to, you know, behave itself. Um, so let's phantom face these dudes up. Linked, good to go. So we're ready to link them. Uh, let's get a chest. That's gonna be my input chest. 
And what we're basically going to do is we're going to use XNet to check if there's the appropriate amount of items, okay, inside the chest. At least one mana pearl, mana diamond, mana steel. And we're going to use connectors. So let's see, do I have any redstone-ish power around here somewhere, like near-ish by? Probably not. I mean, we've got, yeah, I'll just have to get another one of those wireless doohickeys. I was gonna make sure that my thing was nearby, but that's all good. Sweet. Oh, better take this out before I forget. Cause I always forget. Um, so we can keep this over here. So what I'll do is have um, you here with the wireless doohickey there. I love these little wireless RF transmitters. Frankly, they're a little bit overpowered, but they're really nice when you need a small amount of RF in an area. Um, you know, I just need a little bit of RF over here. I don't need, you know, thousands of RF. I need like an 80 or less. So it's just such an awesome hookup. Um, so we'll do, this actually should work and be like super compact and efficient. Nice, that's pretty cool. So we're gonna set up the following, right? We're gonna wanna check for each type of item. Now here's the deal. So first off, we're gonna create a sensor network, okay? Logic, create. Uh, we're gonna check inside the chest and we're gonna look for items greater than zero of each type, right? So one, two, three. Okay, and what we're going to say is basically, if you have this guy, activate the white color. If you have this guy, activate the red color. And if you have this guy, activate the green color. Now, these are ors. So you can't put all three white and have it be like, activate white when all three of these items are present. It doesn't work that way. They're ors. So if you made them all white, like this, the presence of any one of these items would trigger the white signal, which is not what we want. What we want is to check for the existence of all three and only do something when all three materials exist inside the chest, okay? So that's what we wanna do and that's what we're gonna do. Then we're going to want to change this and make it like that. So what it's gonna do is if mana steals in there, output the white signal. If mana diamonds in there, output the red signal. And if mana pearls in there, output the green signal. Got it? Good. Next, we're gonna wanna do an item. Uh, and I'm gonna disable this so that we're not actually transferring anything yet, okay? Um, we're gonna create an item channel over here that's going to extract from the chest and insert into this dude. Uh, now it's only gonna run when you're receiving all three colors. So this, configuration here is on an and logic gate. So if you're getting white, red, and green signal, then you're allowed to run, okay? And this guy is only gonna emit white, red, and green signal when all three items are present. So in other words, don't transfer anything until you've got all three items. Got it? Cool. Now here's the deal. Um, we can be really specific about this and say, to transfer one item at a time is what we need to do. Because I can't put all three items in here because what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, I'm allowed to transfer mana steel or mana diamonds or mana pearls. So it's just gonna start dumping mana steel. So if I put like five mana steel in there, right? It's not gonna work too well. And I'll demonstrate that right now. So like if we put all three items in here, right? Um, and we took out mana pearls, right? And I set this guy to be an insert, okay? Uh, if we activate the logic channel right now, watch what's gonna happen. In theory, this should start transferring already. You and you and you are both active. So it's not doing anything because it's checking for all three items. Cool? Nice. Um, so that's working. That functionality is working. If I place one ender pearl in there, it should start dropping a ton of mana steel, which is not what we want, right? We want to drop one mana steel and then one diamond and then one ender pearl. So we're gonna change this uh, as soon as I take a nap. Cause it's dark out. Not that there's a problem with monsters. By the way, in case you couldn't tell, 
I was testing this in my test world before I built this, which is why I have a pretty good idea of how it needs to be built. I usually, you know, run through a test world just to make sure I understand how things are going to function before I come and record. Sometimes I don't, but sometimes I do. Um, so let's put these items back in the chest and let's change this channel. So we're going to actually have three channels for this, right? Uh, we're going to have one that's going to transfer the mana. And instead of running every second, I want it to run every 10 seconds. Okay. Channel three will be another item channel that is going to be an extract. Okay. Um, and it requires white, red, and green to run. And remember, this is disabled right now, so we're not emitting any signal colors ever. Um, and you're going to transfer, so the first one was mana steel, right? So we're going to want mana diamonds on this guy. And we'll set this dude to insert. Item, create channel. Uh, you're going to, again, need all three colors active, right? So one, two, three in extract mode every 10 seconds. Okay, and you're going to do mana pearls. Now, this isn't going to work. And I got stuck on this for like five minutes in my test world. And I'm going to show you what's not going to work. You ready? So, in theory, this should work, right? You would expect this to work and everything's going to work great. Let's activate the channel and see what happens. Why am I only getting mana ingots? What's up with that? It does not seem to be behaving in the way that I would expect. Well, let me show you why. And this is why Advanced Tooltips was on earlier this episode. Okay, you ready? If I turn on F3H, mana ingots, mana diamonds, and mana pearls are all the th same item ID, 4539. Okay, so that's the same item ID with different metadata. So what we have to do is go into the extract filter and make sure to match on metadata. And now it can tell the difference between the three. Normally metadata is used for like damage values, but some mod authors use it to differentiate their items and not use a lot of item IDs, which is a good way to do it. So you just have to be aware that that's happening. So a good way to check that is turn on F3H and check the item numbers there like I just did. So now we're going to put stuff in there, right? And if we turn on our logic channel, let's see if this is working. Go ahead now. One... To, it's taking a long time. A little bit longer of a delay than I would have expected. I did have this on, so let's do this. Let's set this guy to, this is why we test it without the Terra Steel agglomeration plate. Let's put it every five seconds. This might be a better approach. Oh, we better put our items back in here. Oh, <laughs> things are being picked up. <laughs> nice. Uh, I better test to make sure. I'm going to take my magnet off for a minute and make sure that they don't get picked up from there. I don't think they will. Nice. That's what I would expect to see. So every five seconds, it's going to drop. Hopefully, that's not too long of a delay. So what I'm also going to do is make sure that I've got you and you. So let's... What are you doing here? What's up, buddy? That's right, beat it. Sneaky Enderman. Alright, so let's put... And we'll see how quickly that runs. See, all three fell at once. Nice. That's cool. Uh, or not. There goes the other two. Alright, so we got... Hmm. You are doing one delay. So... There's another trick we can do with this. Um, let's, let's do something a little bit different. So here's what we can do. You ready? There's a new feature to XNet, newish. Um, that actually looks really cool. What we can do is configure the following. Remember we can change the redstone mode and we can measure a redstone signal on this connector here on the chest. Let's do that, but there's a new one called, and this was a feature request by Direwolf, do one operation on a pulse. So what we can do is configure each output to run on one pulse so that every time you receive redstone pulse, 
it'll drop one set of items. In theory, that's how this should work, right? So by putting the items in here now, and what I'm going to do is grab a lever. I tested this a little bit in my single player world, and I debated whether or not I wanted to do it, but I'm thinking I want to do it, right? So let's get a redstone pulse right here. Now this has to trigger on this connector because that's where I set the pulse on. So I think this should work. So if I give it a redstone pulse, it drops one set of items and only one set of items until it receives another redstone pulse. There might be a slight delay it looks like between the dropping of the items, but that's okay. Cool. So every time you receive a redstone pulse, Drop a set of items. Nice. How cool is that? So with that in mind, I could probably shrink this delay down to like 20. Because part of the reason it's getting that... There we go. Now everything comes together. How cool is that? I like it, right? And it'll only work if all five items are present. If we don't have enough mana diamonds in there, pulse does nothing. How cool is that? Mana diamonds in there, pulse does one set. Dude, that's what's up. All right, so keeping in mind that that's what's up. Um, so I could just have it pulse like once every 10 seconds or something like that. Um, or we could check for the presence of the Terra Stealing get coming in and then do a pulse on that. Because as soon as we see the Terra Steal come in, we'll see that there's another pulse. Now the problem is, um, like the first time, right? Like if we're doing five, right, we'll probably want to wait for the Terra Steal to be done before we do another set of mana items. Um, and we know it's only going to take about five seconds-ish to craft with this many pools nearby. It's going to be quick. Like, really quick. So, we're probably going to want to do that in a smartish manner. So, let me come back in a second and decide how if I want to check for Terra Steel. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking what I'll probably want to do is just every 5 or 10 seconds, emit a pulse. Like, every 10 seconds, redstone pulse on that wire, and then you're good. Yeah, let's do it that way. Let's just get a timer. You know what I could do? Because <laughs> we're doing Batana. And we're going to do it the Batania way. The Hourglass. I like the Hourglass. We're going to see if it works. If the Hourglass can just sit there. Um, so the Hourglass is cool. Uh, if I get my Lexigo Batania. And we take a look up Hourglass. Hovering Hourglass. It basically is a timer that emits a redstone signal every so often. Um... It's very simple. It's a sand-based timer. Um, when you put, there's sand, red sand, or soul sand that can go in there, okay? Sand will count for one second per block inside the hourglass. Red sand is every 10 seconds, and soul sand is every minute. So if you want a timer every two minutes, you put two soul sand in. If you want a timer that lasts 25 seconds, you put 25 sand in, right? So if I got some sand, and we got like 10, and we got a piece of redstone to demonstrate this, okay? You put your hourglass down, you put your redstone signal, and you put 10 sand in. And see the hourglass, like the little sand is dropping? Fancy. And then after the 10 seconds, pulse. How cool is that? That's cool. And then another 10 seconds. And then right click to remove it. And I think if you have your wand of the forest, you can lock it so you don't accidentally right click it. Locked. And you can even see the timer on it. Nice. That is cool. So you can't accidentally right click it. You can right click with the wand of the forest to remove the timer and then you can change the sand time. Cool. So let's see if this works. We're gonna pop over to here. Hopefully it talks directly to this guy without a redstone dust needing to be in between. Cause that would be awesome. All right, so all the items in there. So within a few seconds, it should drop one set of items. Might need a redstone dust in between. Oh, no, it doesn't. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Exactly what I wanted to see, right? And then 10 seconds later, here comes another set of items. Look at that. Beautiful. 
Um, I love it. I love everything about it. We're going to leave that in place, right? And now without any items in there, or even if we just you know didn't have all three, it would be good. All right, back in a minute because I want to actually finish implementing this. All right, guys, we're back. So let's actually implement this guy now. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is actually craft a piece of Terra Steel so I can have it for defining the recipe and the whitelist and all that stuff. So let's get one. So we're gonna actually fully test this by putting one, two, three, one of each item in there. And within 10 seconds, we should get what we're supposed to get. Why you no drop? What was that? This just worked a hundred times in a row perfectly, and like all of a sudden it's like, nah, I'm good. What is up with that? Oh, I think I have an idea of what's wrong. Uh, let's set this to number of ticks to check every 100 ticks. So it's only going to check every five seconds. I think what happened is it dropped the mana steel, it dropped the mana diamond, and then it checked and said, hey, I don't have all three items, and it turned off the signal. So we didn't get the mana pearl. So by telling it to only check once every 100 ticks, um, it'll check less often, and we probably shouldn't have that problem anymore. It was working so well before because we had multiple sets in there. This should work, though. Maybe on the next... There we go. Nice. See how quick that is? Well before that 10 tick second time or ticked again. So let's put a white list of Terra Steel in here. Uh, we're going to put an import bus here. Okay. Uh, so you only pick up Terra Steel. Um... We're gonna want a crafter here. Oh yeah, you're eating, that's right. We use a lot of mana for that, remember. That's the correct facing direction. And then we'll come over here and we'll teach you that, hey buddy, uh, one of you and one of you and one of you will make a Terra Steel. Okay. And that should be cool. Put these things away. Put this over here. And you go into the crafter. Hey, it would be smart of me to actually get the pattern I just made. For some reason, I always forget to grab that pattern. I don't know why. It's like a brain derp or something like that. I just, yeah. So now Terra Steel should be auto-craftable with the system. Are we ready to test it? Here goes nothing. I come over here and I say I want Terra Steel. Okay, I'm going to put these guys in here and I'm going to hit start so it doesn't have to craft them. And within 10 seconds or so, because that's how long we set the delay to, we could probably honestly make it 5 seconds. That worked beautifully. And if we check in here... Terra Steel. Ha ha ha, that's awesome. <laughs> now, let's just double prove it that we'll remove all these things and we'll say, I would like another piece of two Terra Steel, please. Okay, start. Okay, it got all the items it needs. It pre crafted the Mana Steel and all the other stuff. And then within 10 seconds, it should drop a set of items for Terra Steel. Only one set. And then 10 seconds later, it'll drop another set of items for Terra Steel. Dude. How cool is that? I am having far too much fun with XNet. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, that is really awesome. McJD, you have outdone yourself, sir. I'm having way too much fun with this mod. Um, so these guys are gonna refill my mana pools, which, you know, is fine, right? They they took a hit to their mana storage, but that's okay. That's why we have Beef Wellington automation. They'll fill back up pretty quickly. But that's automated Terra Steel, guys. All with XNet. And a little bit of refined storage, obviously, but mostly XNet. XNet did most of the heavy lifting there. Um, as you can see, XNet is a pretty powerful mod. For those who want, like, really serious control over certain functions and features, while at the same time... And I'm going to take off my Mana Seer monocle so I don't see the particle effects through the wall. That always just bugs me. Um, so yeah, it's super powerful, super useful, um, cool mod. And it's actually pretty easy to use once you wrap your head around the logic controls that you need, right? All right, so that's automated Terra Steel using 
Xnet and Refined Storage. That's really cool. Uh, the reason I wanted Automated Terra Steel is because I'd like to fight the Gaia Guardian. Uh, probably not this episode, but soon. Um, so let's go back and we'll find... I think it's under Alphomancy. Alphomancy. Ritual of the Gaia. Nice. Because um, we get some pretty powerful stuff there. Uh, so we're going to need a beacon. We're going to need some Gaia pylons. And we're going to need a single Terra Steel ingot to summon the Gaia Guardian, right? So we're gonna need two pixie dust. I think we need four of these in total, right? So four mana pylons and eight pixie dust and eight elementium. So this should actually be not too hard to do. Nice. Nice. Oh, I already have eight of that, sweet. Mana pylon. So we're going to need about 80 U. One more of these dudes and one more of these dudes. I don't actually need the mana pearl. So mana pylon. Sweet. Four of those. We can set these guys here and we get four of those. Uh, let's get ourselves a beacon, which shouldn't be too big of a problem for us. And we're going to want some iron blocks. So an active beacon. Um, let's get ready. Where are we going to want to fight the Gaia Guardian? That's a question for the ages. I'm thinking I want to do it like up here would be cool. Did I ever make a horn of the whatchamacallit thingies? That would be cool. Horn of the wild. Why don't I have one of those? I don't know, but I do now. Great way to clear out land. Combined with this dude, and then we're golden. Sweet. Put these things away. And let's anchor this guy so that we can visually represent where everything needs to go. So like... Mm -hmm. Visualize. Here-ish. Does that look cool? So we would put... These guys here, and then this this now the ritual of gaia is a tough fight i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's it's not easy we're gonna probably want to prepare ourselves a little bit so next episode why don't i prepare myself for the ritual of gaia and get ready to fight her uh it's not gonna be easy and i'm probably going to because i don't want to cheese the fight i want to remove my wyvern helm and i want to maybe get some uh some some good Batania armor or something and we'll probably get some Batania potions and some other stuff so we're gonna wrap up the episode here and we'll come back next time prepare to fight and probably fight the Gaia Guardian for now Daryl 20 setting off hope you guys enjoyed the episode we'll be back next time and once we fight the Gaia Guardian we can unlock another tier of really powerful stuff from Batania all right guys take it easy